Click the link and chat if you'd like. What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of my little mixology show, Rob the Rich, Free the Poor, coming to you live from beautiful Long Beach, California, downtown Long Beach. Uh, today's episode is about vermouth, and I have some vermouth bottles here. This is vermouth blanc. This is dry vermouth. Uh, today, we are going to be focusing on this guy right here. This is sweet vermouth. And so I have some notes here. Until about 1880 or so, pretty much all cocktails were built up to um, accent the flavor of their base liquor without disguising it. So, and this is from David Wondrick uh, in his great book called Imbibe. The resulting drinks were pungent, boozy, strong, and they demanded a consumer was sort of acclimated to the taste of liquor and knew how to stow it away. Um, it's it's basically, this lovely nectar is a fortified aperitif wine, aperitif wine. If you're interested in learning more about those kinds of cocktails, lower ABV uh, in sort of the French style, check out this book um, by uh, Rebecca Pepler. It's a really, really great book. I got some, some good information from her. Um, so the, there's a base wine and it is spiked or fortified with a natural uh, neutral spirit like a great brandy or something like that. The addition of the alcohol it stops the fermentation and it creates a sweeter, stronger ABV wine. So think of this as a plussed up wine. Um, the mixture uh, is then infused with botanicals um, and that, that's usually a, a proprietary and secret mix of herbs and bark and fruit and spices. Traditional vermouth, this stuff right here, we'll talk about more about this in a second, um, contains wormwood, which is that uh, very strange um, um, concoction that is part of absinthe. Uh, the commercial history of this beverage begins in 1786 when Antonio Carpano put vermouth, this very vermouth right here, on the market as an aperitif with medicinal properties. Uh, so, uh, all the cocktails we're going to do today are uh, based on this particular uh, thing. So, we're going to use a lot of this, this Carpano Antico. So, the first one is, is um, its exact origin is unknown. i got to consult my notes again. <laughs> uh, but it makes an appearance in 1869 in the Steward and uh, Barkeeper's Manual. And uh, from Imbibe, quote, once people noticed vermouth and began poking at it, it was inevitable that sooner or later somebody was going to try to make a cocktail out of it. After all, this is America and cocktails is what we drank. So what I'm going to start with, you guys, is almost almost uh, really the one of the first sort of cocktails that that there that there was uh, using this particular I was going to say spirit, but it's not really a spirit. Um, we are going to start with um, three dashes of, I'm going to use, this is the F uh, Fee Brothers Old Fashioned Aromatic Bitters. These are pretty close to a similar, they've been sort of backwards designed, very similar to the bitters that were around uh, when, when this cocktail uh, started to become a thing. So three dashes of that. Got some, hopefully got some, we'll get some live chat going, I hope. And this is our first time on uh, YouTube Live, so we'll have to see how that goes. Oh, okay, got some people watching. All right, doesn't say who, so we've got some live folks out there. Thank you so much for joining us live. Now we're on YouTube, so thanks for being with us here. Uh, and then we're going to do two ounces. There's really nothing to this. This is basically like a, uh, a slightly plussed up version of, of this beautiful um, – this, this beautiful uh, – Elixir, and I should say for the record, not all vermouths are created alike. This is the best. This is the original 1786 Carpano Antica formula. This is the original stuff. This sweet, beautiful. It has some chocolate notes in it. it, it this makes this makes for some of the best Manhattans you will ever have. And I'm going to make one of those for you guys in just a second. All right. Uh, let's see. I think that was one, <laughs> and now we've got two ounces. So we just put a little bitters in there. Doesn't matter if it's more, it's beautiful. And let's see, what else? Yeah, and a little teaspoon of maraschino liqueur. I'm using, I have this giant bottle of Luxardo maraschino liqueur. So we're gonna use, oh, it says a teaspoon. So that's about a quarter of an ounce. So 
I'm just going to put a little bit in there. All right. Uh, uh, uh. So, yeah, chocolate vermouth. So the thing that you'll notice if you start getting into this beautiful elixir is two things. Number one, you must store it in the refrigerator. Um, you can't keep it on the shelf. Even, even putting it in like a uh, in your cabinet in your kitchen or something like that, that's fine if you want to cook with it, but it's going to go bad. As soon as you open it, you sort of lit a fuse. So you want to keep this in your refrigerator, and this will keep for months. My last bottle, I bought this a few days ago, my last bottle lasted for two and a half months without getting skunky at all, and actually closer to three months I, I've even pushed it, and it still tastes great. And as soon as you start doing that with all of your vermouths, doesn't matter what kind, if it's dry, for martinis, that's next week's show. Um, or if you're um, sort of a, more of a Manhattan person, like I am too, um, if you keep this stuff in the fridge, uh, it just makes all the difference in the world. And that's probably that's probably why a high maintenance alcohol. Yeah, sure, uh, it could be. Well, you just have to take care of it, you know. Uh, and especially when you're buying this stuff, which is thirty-five dollars a bottle, uh, that's probably a good idea, right? Okay. What's left? So if we put our maraschino in there and all you do is put some ice and stir it up, you guys. Just, you couldn't ask for a more simple cocktail. So there's no there's no spirits in this. Um, it's just vermouth and bitters and a teensy weensy little bit of sweetener. Um, we put some of that mar maraschino liqueur in there. You almost don't need it. I mean, because this particular vermouth is is sweet and lovely and very well balanced. So um, I'll be curious to see what my off-camera taste testers say in just a moment or two. I'm surprised there's no, oh, got four people. I wonder if mom and dad are on there. Got some other folks watching live. Come on, be brave, you guys. If you're watching the show, please chat me up like you normally did on the old, the old platform, the platform that shall not be named. Oh, dear Lord, that is so... Good. And there's nothing to this. Oh, oh my gosh. I almost like that. I just took a little taste. I almost like that better because the, the, um, wow. I just, I, I just got a, a bitter bomb. Like I got these beautiful, the taste of the bitters. So again, this is, this is like in 1869, they started making this particular cocktail. There's nothing to this. And all it needs is a floating lemon wheel. So we're just going to we have a nice fresh lemon and we, we're going to drop that in there and we have a fancy vermouth cocktail cheers oh man vermouth is definitely the star of the show wow that is so simple i've actually i'm, I'm trying I've, there's one of these that i've made but i'm trying uh, with all of these vermouth ones i'm trying to not to have them for a couple of days before so i don't ruin the um so I don't ruin the effect and my palate isn't destroyed, right? So right up front, the vermouth is obviously center stage because that's all there is. But the bitters, um, these old fashioned bitters, these Fee Brothers bitters really complement, you know. So I, I can definitely see how this would be such an easy, easy way to um, get someone started. And it's low ABV alcohol by volume. So this is great for like sort of that early afternoon, you know, if you wanted a sipper. Um, you could, of course, put it on ice. You don't have to serve it in a fancy little coupe like me because this is my cocktail show and I'm, I'm trying to fancy this up. I would suggest that you chill your glassware, though. Um, I am i don't chill my glassware so you guys can see what the cocktail looks like, but you really should keep any and all of your glassware that you serve, um, anything that's a chilled cocktail, um, unless you're just going to have a spirit neat, you know, uh, and welcome to Scotland. Okay. Mm. All right, so if any of my taste testers want to give that a try off camera or helpful taste testers, we're going to move on to number two. <clears throat> and what we're going to make now, you guys, is this is the old standard. This was like the first version of the Manhattan. The Manhattan is, is probably one of my most favorite cocktails ever. And uh, in doing the, the research for this show, I found out some things about it. And so I have got to read from my notes. Stories are varied, of course, but the evolution of this particular cocktail and its cousin, the martini, seemed to originate in a desire to, one, booze up the vermouth cocktail that we just made, and number two, 
perhaps lower the punch of all booze cocktails to something a little bit more reasonable. So you can kind of see how um, you can kind of see how um, that makes a lot of sense. Either you want to make a vermouth cocktail stronger, or especially with some of the you know bathtub hooch that was being made, you want to temper that down just a little bit. This particular version is delightful and very well balanced. And this is what I'm about to make you guys is my favorite version of this iconic, beautiful cocktail. I just, I can't even, I can't even deal. Yeah, and if you guys want to uh, take a few pictures and, you know, share on the platform that shall not, not be named, it might be a nice way to get people over here. Okay, okay. so, um, all right, so we're gonna start with, it calls for two or three dashes of Peruvian bitters. Well, we, it's not 1800s, so late 1800s, so we can't get those anymore. But again, the Fee Brothers got really, really close. This is, um, this, the, the, the spice profile on this, and you guys probably can taste it in that version. It tastes like Christmas. It has some, there's some baking spices in there. Isn't that rad? Oh yeah. My sister-in-law just got really big eyes. She's like, Whoa, oh, dang, that's really good. Yeah. And that is just bitters, a tiny bit of, of maraschino and vermouth. That's it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go three dashes of this. So this is how I make my Manhattans now. I used to be a spirit forward or booze forward guy. Now, technically, yes, there is some there's some spirit in here, but it's not all spirit, right? So that's the difference between vermouth and like spirit. Um, and it calls for the original calls for uh, from this book right here, Imbibe, Imbibe by David Wondrous. If you are interested in learning about historic cocktails, you guys have to check this out. Oh, we got some more people on here. We've got my mom and dad, Kurt. Thank you so much for joining me, my brother. Good to see you again. Thanks for shifting over to YouTube Live. This is better. I'm hoping that the full frame is nicer and I can still see the chat on the right-hand side. This is really great. So this is where I got these recipes from. This was a translation of, or uh, an adaptation of a, of a historic cocktail book uh, called The Bon Vivant's Companion, all right? So this, this is historic stuff. So we did our bitters. And the next thing we're gonna do, now, it, the original calls for gum syrup. Gum syrup, you would use gum arabic, and it, it gives kind of a, like a silky mouthfeel. But I've done some research, and the hack that we're going to use is just a bar spoon of this. This, if you're a Manhattan person, and my friend Kurt, I know that you're a Manhattan person as well. <laughs> I was thinking of you <laughs> when I was doing this show today. This is the way to make a Manhattan, my friend, because you, you'll just, you'll die. So use a bar spoon of this cherry syrup from the, you have to buy these cherries. These are not cheap. This is $20 for this, but I'm telling you, if you're a Manhattan person or even you want to be a Manhattan person, or you've been curious about a Manhattan, get these cherries. It's worth it. So we're going to use a bar spoon of that syrup, the cherry syrup from, I'm telling you, this is like, Oh, I, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting so excited because this tastes so good. And for all of my Manhattan friends out there, I'm telling you, these specs, you're going to die. So an ounce and a half of our beautiful Carpano Antica Formula Vermouth. Yes, you can use others. Uh, Dolan is a French vermouth. Um, I used to use that when I made my Negronis in Manhattans. But this stuff is better. I'm sorry. He's the original, you know, and it's been around since 1786. It is, it is so good. It's... It's the best, you know, it's worth the money. It's just the best. I had a Manhattan ugh, shaking in Vegas and two things happened. I'm not going to mention where it was. Uh, no, sorry. It wasn't Vegas. It was uh, Temecula. And uh, I watched the bartender and he, he pulls out Chinzana, which is okay. And he put, and then he did my maker's mark and, and he shook it and, and, and he shook it. And there were ice chips in my Manhattan. I had like three sips and I just kind of, I just kind of, it was, it was awful. Uh, well, because now my, my standards are a little bit higher. Okay. Um, now you can use, when you're making your Manhattan's, you can make them with rye. You can make them with bourbon. I prefer to use Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark is a, what we call a weeded bourbon. 17% of the mash bill is wheat. So it's 51% corn, 17% wheat, and then some other stuff. Sometimes they use barley and, and other things to kind of thin it out. And the, I have found that the, the wheat profile or the wheat flavor of this particular bourbon or this, uh, yeah, Kentucky straight bourbon really complements the vermouth. Okay, so we're gonna, it's equal parts, equal parts uh, booze, so equal parts whiskey. You, again, you can use rye if you'd like. We're gonna do another one that has rye in just a few moments, but let's just see how this goes. All right, and then our makers, and we did our little cherry, and we put our 
bitters in there, and there's nothing to it, you guys. This is so simple. There's nothing to it. Got to get my garnish ready to go here. You just want to stir it until it's well chilled, at least 10 to 15 seconds. Don't stir it like those guys in the bar, and that's the other thing, too. They shake it. I, I know, and, and I've seen them do it. I understand. They would shake it. Now, if they had double strained it, and I didn't have ice chips in there, um, it, you know, it's just, it's just, this is better. And you don't have to have one of these fancy dancing mixing glasses, you guys. You can, you can stir up, well, I was going to get like the larger version of these. You can get one of these and just stir your cocktails in that. Pop on strainers fit on that really well. And you can use a, a slotted spoon. You know, you don't need one of these fancy Hawthorne strainers. It's all about, you know, the spirits and the modifiers, what we call vermouth is a modifier. All right, so we're going to pour this. Again, please, if you are doing, if you're starting to plus up your home bar game, please use chilled glassware. Oh, look at that. Right to the wash line. What a pro. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this, present this a little closer because I'm going to do the pièce de résistance. We are going to add some cherries, these beautiful Luxardo. These are maraschino cherries. Those, those Frankenstein science experiments that they have for hot fudge sundaes are great for hot fudge sundaes. Those are not good for cocktails, you guys. I'm telling you, especially, okay, I'm going to say this for the record. If you're, if you are an adult, of course you're an adult because, you know, if you're not 21, then don't drink yet. You're not, you haven't earned it. Um, because you wouldn't like this anyway, just have a Coors Light and, you know, just, you know, throw up. But if you're actually interested in like refined cocktails, get the good stuff. It's really not that expensive. So we have a triple cherry garnish that we're going to set lovingly on top. You can just look at it. You can just look at it and say, this is going to taste good, right? Presentation, just like in food, matters. Let me dump out my ice. And so this is my this is this is how I do my Manhattans now. This is the old standard uh, formula number one. Cheers. <laughs> Game over. Check please. That is so stinking good. This is whew, pause for dramatic effect. This is this is such a well balanced cocktail. You taste everything. You get the bitters, get you on the back of the uh, of their tongue, of course. I was mentioning some chocolate notes about this bad boy earlier uh, to one of my off-camera guests today. This is, there's something special about the balance between the Maker's Mark and this particular vermouth that um, just, they complement each other in such a way that they, that they it, it, they bring out the best of themselves, you know what I mean? And then and then the 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 little uh, the little kicker is is obviously the little bit more of a booze kick. But oh, oh my gosh, I could have four or ten of those. Very dangerous. So that is um, <laughs> that's beautiful. All right, taste testers, get in there. They're like <laughs> I have some. I have a couple of off-camera taste testers. My lovely relatives, thank you for joining us today live. Um, so again, that is the old standard formula number one. Um, the, um, the, the the stories about it, it's possible that it was served at um, at a at a, a, a certain club in Manhattan. You know, it's just somebody figured it out. You know, my guess is some some bartenders they were making vermouth cocktails and they put and somebody said I you know like I want some more booze in it and they and they put some some whiskey in it. The same thing happened with the Negroni. The Negroni is a cocktail that uses, uh, which used to be an Americano. So you you had the uh, Campari and you had the gin. And instead of putting like vermouth or wine or something, you know, they or sorry, they asked for gin. And that's how the Negroni. So, you know, I mean, it, it happens. <laughs> you know, Americans, we like our cocktails. Okay, next. Now what we're going to do is a reverse. Uh, and I'm going to use rye on this one. So it's a very similar formula to the one we just made. Let's see. We're going to need... Let's, get, let's use one of these fancy guys. That's kind of pretty. We'll bring that up. up so so um, same kind of thing. We're going to use our Fee Brothers Old Fashioned Bitters. You can find these. I, I'm not sponsored by Total Wine and More. I just love it. I just want to be, you know, uh, 
clear. Um, but they really have all the best stuff, you guys. Um, they have a whole bitters wall. And I know there are other places, but that's where I go. Um, so if you've got a total wine and more near you, they've, they've pretty much got everything you would you would uh, want and need. Let's do, um, let's see. We're going to need, uh, again, a, we're going to use a, a teaspoon. It calls for the uh, Luxardo. We're going to use the actual Maraschino liqueur. So a scant, that's like a quarter of an ounce. I like to use that instead of a teaspoon. So we got that going. Uh, okay, so two ounces. So this is kind of, so this is more of vermouth. So we're going to go to two to one. So two ounces of our Carpano Antica. So instead of equal, right, it's not Okay, so I guess the reverse would have been two booze and one vermouth. So I guess it's kind of a middle. I don't, I don't know why I called it a reverse. Because the book called it a reverse, but it's not really a reverse. It's really... I don't know what that would be. If someone's smarter than me, maybe figure that out. And let's do, oh, we're gonna use rye. And I'm gonna use Sazerac rye. This rye is really, rye is made from, obviously rye is the base grain that they um, make this with. This is really great. This is uh, 90 proof. And, um, but they, 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 they sweeten up the rye just a little bit with barley. Rye can be quite bitter and, and, and my deal on, of Manhattan is it should complement a little bit of overpour there. Um, it should complement the vermouth, and but it shouldn't overtake, and it shouldn't. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, overtake or uh, get in the way of the vermouth. So let's do that one. We've got our syrup and rye and two ounces of that and our bitters. And we're gonna do this in this fancy guy here. And again, I encourage you to chill your glassware because. As soon as you are making any stirred cocktail, whether it's um, Manhattans like these, Manhattan-esque cocktails, uh, or you're doing martinis, as soon as you pour this cocktail into a glass, you have lit a fuse. And if that cocktail gets warm, bleh, just like if this stuff gets warm, um, you're toast, right? It's just, it makes a mess or it just it doesn't taste good. So I think if you kind of, it's a feeling your way around the dilution aspect all right and i actually haven't made this one with these particular specs so i'm curious to see what these what this uh tastes like i love this little low fancy glass and this one has another lemon wheel so we're gonna float a lemon wheel on top thank you guys all of us uh in the live chat appreciate that dun, 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 dun. oh huh create a channel okay did you guys have to create a channel to chat? Okay. Mom seems to have made that yeah. Okay. So technical. Okay. okay. So here we go. What is this? This is the formula number two. Cheers. With rye. Oh, and Carpano Tico. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I'm a little surprised. I like that. <laughs> I'm surprised because usually with rye, you know, I, I'm i not really a rye forward guy. Now, this is a very smooth rye. That's, that's probably the reason because I chose Sazerac rye. There are other ryes. If you could choose a rye that is bitter, you know, I mean, it's great. And some people like that. They're like, oh, I love bitter spirits. Okay, then go for it. Uh, it's just not my cup of tea. But that that is really, really well balanced. That is, that's kind of in the middle. So the first one we made was the bitters, right? A teensy weensy bit of the liqueur. And the vermouth. So that was obviously the smoothest one, lowest ABV, most palatable. So if there's anyone watching uh, the show, whether it's now live or you're watching it later on my channel later uh, in the future or whatever, um, try that first one. And then this other one, this this may be a nice, like if you've ever ordered, if you ever go in and you want to try a Manhattan in a bar, ask them to do, uh, you know, say, can you give me an ounce of rye and two ounces of vermouth? And, and so it sort of cuts the... Uh, vermouth a little bit and um, mellows it out, but it's delightful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Very similar to the others. I'm going to take one more sip. As you can tell, uh, I like it. Mm -hmm. All right, taste testers, get in there. Oh, I'm telling you, the star of the show is this Carpano Antica vermouth. It is, it's, it's uh, you know, obviously it's a proprietary blend. It's kind of like the, the kernels. 
you know, the chickens, this is a secret recipe. We all know that KFC has that taste that you just, I mean, you shouldn't eat it ever because it's really bad for you, um, but it tastes so good, right? So it's kind of the same thing with some of these vermouths. All right, what's left? Uh, okay, I got two more. Uh, the next one, this is the new standard. And okay, so now this is, this is like the one that I had um, in Temecula. Um, but I'm going to stir it. So I'm going to make this the way that it should have been made, the, the way that is, is preferred. So if you're ever in a bar and, and they shake a Manhattan, just be prepared, um, you know. <laughs> um, and, and sometimes if you see, you know, if, if this uh, if this vermouth is, is, on the, um, is on the agenda, is on the back bar, then you're in good shape. So uh, I'm going to do, what was that, about three. I like bitters. So I'm, I'm going to – and then this is Angostura – Bitters. These are the standard bitters. If you if you're looking for bitters to start with, these are the the standard ones. And you can get. I got this at Smart and Final. Um, nothing to it. A uh, lot of things to do with this very uh, historic um, bitters. They um, they're actually in, in Trinidad. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Um, okay. And then we're gonna do. I'm gonna do. Let's see. Let's do this one. I already did Maker's Mark. Yeah, I'm gonna use bourbon. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use Larceny bourbon on this one. It's gonna be uh, just to have a little bit more punch. So I'm gonna do two ounces of that. So um, and you you can uh, you know I, I've had like I just made that one with that had rye. So this is a two to one. This is a standard formula where it's two ounces of your spirit and one ounce of your vermouth. Now, if you're using this vermouth, this lovely rich Carpano Antica formula, you're in good shape. Uh, because it'll taste great. So this is a little boozier. And so for those of us who like spirits a lot, this is probably your um, your friend. I am going to, because if I ever had a bar, this is how I would do my Manhattans. And I'm going to do a bar spoon of the secret cherry elixir instead of the maraschino, uh, maraschino, who knows how to pronounce it. I really don't care. Uh, we're going to just dissolve that in there before I put my ice in it. That's a good way to go. You could also do a quarter ounce of cherry hearing. I know I have some friends on here that uh, know about the magic of cherry hearing, which is a cherry liqueur, but you have to use it sparingly because it can overpower everything else that's in there. Um, and then there was one thing. <laughs> so I tried this the other day. <clears throat> this is an atomizer of absinthe, um, which is a, an anise uh, uh, spirit that is very, very high in proof, uh, 130 proof, um, and it is popular in a, uh, for a cocktail called the Sazerac. So I, I tried to make this uh, the other day, and um, it calls for a couple of dashes of absinthe, and I have the lovely Green Fairy in one of these little Japanese dasher bottles, and I put a couple of dashes in there, and it was like a sort of a licorice over... I, I, was, I was shocked. I was kind of... I took a sip, and... <gasps> sacrilege i poured it out so instead i'm just going to spray i'm just going to atomize the inside of our lovely nick and nora beautiful tulip glass instead so instead of doing you know the the the, <clears throat> the drops of the of the absinthe i'm just kind of like a sazerac a sazerac um that's a great one i i've made it uh a while ago but it doesn't have vermouth so that's why it's not on the show okay uh, we'll do that yeah, I don't know if you guys are able to comment. I don't know if the comments, it's only chat. Are there comments available too? Yeah. So if you guys have any on, if there are any, if there's shows you want me to do, obviously this is part one. Next week I'm going to do uh, the other vermouth. So we're going to do a bunch of the driving moose. We're going to do a bunch of martinis. We're going to have all sorts of fun with vermouth. But that's another reason why I wanted to uh, move to YouTube Live. Um, if, if there's things that you want to see, if you, it's a cocktail you've always wanted to have me break down, please feel free. I I am doing this channel for you. All right, so let's toss this bad boy in here. So again, now we've got two ounces of bourbon. We've got our Angostura bitters, which are kind of the, the standard ones. And we're gonna do our, you know what I'm gonna do is drop, let's just do a, let's do a single cherry on this one. I think I'll put it inside sometimes. Uh, you can you can do this a couple of two ways. You can um, I'm going to present it this way. I'm going to I'm going to drop the cherry in. You could actually um, I've seen this done before. 
where you put the cherry in first. Maybe I should have done that. And then it's kind of like the little present at the very end of the of the cocktail, which is kind of cool, especially when this one, which is a little bit more booze heavy. So interesting to see. I'm interested in how this turns out to see if the uh, absinthe. All right. <clears throat> All right, so you get a little absinthe on the nose because we did obviously we did the uh, we did the the spritzer. All right, mm, mm, mm. 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 oh my gosh, that's too funny. The bourbon, it's good, it's good. Don't get me wrong. And I've had I've had a ton of of Manhattans, and I served it in a Nick and Nora, so it looks kind of like something else. Um, I just, I just wanted to, I wanted to, uh, change up the glassware a little bit, but this is like, it's very, it's very spirit forward. So I taste the, the bourbon, which is great. It's a good bourbon. This Larceny bourbon is, is fantastic. It would taste good with Maker's Mark. It would taste good with rye, but, and this is me learning. I have learned that really, if you have a good vermouth, the vermouth should be the star of the show with this particular cocktail, not the other way around. So that's just my humble opinion. I'm still going to drink it. <laughs> I'm still going to drink it, of course. I mean, come on. But, you know, I'm just saying. It's like that way. Mm, okay. Mm, mm, mm. All right. I had a question in the chat. I should start making my own bitters. I know. Yes. Oh, I love it. Irish or Scotch? Why are you Scotch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not not too many. Scot Scotch is hard. Scotch is hard to um, to use. Like I, I make one uh, called the penicillin, which is really great because that smoky peatiness. It's hard to find things that pair well. Um, what really pairs well is um, honey syrup and lemon juice. You just make a gold rush with scotch. So maybe we'll do that. All right, so I'll take another sip. It doesn't suck, you guys. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I'll still drink it. It's good. But the others are so much smoother. Um, the vermouth is more center stage. All right, one more. Feel free. Try that one, Aaron. I don't know, you know, what you'll what you'll think of that one. Um, all right. So a sibling, or at least a cousin of a cocktail called the Martinez, not the Martini, but the Martinez. Right? Yeah. I'm so I'm getting the, I'm getting a similar reaction from my off camera brother. He's kind of like, yeah, is it right? Yeah. I know. You've had all this vermouth forward, and now it's like bourbon forward and, it, and it's almost shocking you know so he i have some taste testers that are checking things out okay um <clears throat> so this is really cool so let me uh, go back to my notes uh, forgive me I, I put some notes on my little ipad uh because I've, I've got my whole all my cocktail book is now on a pdf and uh just let me know uh, in the comments or whatever or, or the chat I'll, I'll save the chat if you want a copy of this book i will email it to you um so a sibling or at least a cousin of the Martinez, which was the found, was the um, predecessor of the Martini. This is called the Turf Club. So this is the first Martini cocktail. I think you're going to be shocked at what I put in this glass, okay? Because every Martini you probably ever had was clear, and it was in one of these glasses like this. And maybe James Bond said it was supposed to be shaken and not stirred. Like we're turning the whole thing on its ear, you guys. Okay. Um, let me let me zoom in. Oh, you know what I love about iPads? Those of us who are of a certain age will love this. If you can't read the stinking words, you just go like that. You just zoom in and then you can see the words. This is so good. I don't have to squint. God bless America. All right. Uh, the Turf Club is or could be by the fifth cocktail. You guys know I, I start to get a little fun. Um, it, it, this is the first cocktail to provide, uh, to combine gin and vermouth. Uh, it makes its first written appearance in George Winter's 1884, how to mix drinks, barkeeper's handbook. And it was, uh, as the turf club, uh, later books were just calling it the turf. The name turf club refers to the gentlemen's clubs of the late 1800s, early 1900s, which operated as a combined restaurant, bar, meeting place, and gambling den for the gentlemen of the day. Captains of industry and the aristocracy always have liked horse racing, and where folk gather to uh, watch racing, there is bound to be betting. So many a turf accountant, bookmaker, bookie, frequented such clubs, and many a turf cocktail was concerned. Uh, consumed. One of the most famous of these gentlemen clubs, the Turf Club, stood at the corner of Madison Avenue and 26th Street in New York. The building 
Uh, Jerome Mansion had pedigree, being the former home of Lady Randolph Churchill, the American mother of Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill's mom, uh, uh, it, 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 she is she is perhaps credited with organizing the event that inspired this particular cocktail. So I've actually never made this, and so I am I am excited to do it for you. We're going to start with three dashes of our Ango or our Angostura bitters, because by this time. By this time, the, uh, when the Turf Club cocktail was made, these were the bitters that were widely available. Yes, Boker's bitters, fees, the Fee Brothers. I can do a whole show on the Fee Brothers. Those guys are amazing. Um, but this is going to blow your mind because we are not using bourbon or rye or any kind of whiskey. We are using Old Tom Gin. So not like London Dry Gin. These are styles. Plymouth is a style. The American gins have their style. This is old Tom gin. So it is actually aged in a barrel. I don't I don't think it's got a toasted barrel. I'm going to learn more about this old Tom gin stuff. But I have the oh, oh my god. The nose on this stuff. So this is this is a cocktail that is not made with London dry gin. This is very interesting. Um, this is a a a company. It's a brandy company here in America called and i because i've done some research it's called copper and kings and they they have backwards designed <clears throat> the styles of old tom gin that were popular when this cocktail um was developed you know way sort of back in the you know in the 1800s okay so we are going to do an ounce and a half of this old tom gin and i will say this for those of you who are not gin people. I know some of whom are in this room. Um, this, I've had this gin by itself. I've had other old Tom gin cocktails. I have had old Tom gin by itself. And for, for me, who's more of a bourbon guy, and I love gin too. I love everything. The only thing I just, vodka is like, there's nothing to it. You might as well just, like, why? You know, there's nothing to it. All right. So it's equal parts of our old Tom gin and our Carpano Antica formula. And so I'm going to tell you what, when that bad boy is in there, an ounce and a half of that awesome stuff, dude, you guys are in good shape. Uh, <clears throat> a quarter teaspoon, this is uh, Demerara syrup, right? So our, um, I don't use gum syrup. So this is uh, the uh, Demerara sugar or turbinado sugar syrup. So this, this is the saving grace, you know, so instead of putting the cherry uh, in there, Oh, our short rib timer. All right. Just turn the timer off. All right. Our braised short ribs that we are having for dinner. That would have been such a great pairing, right, for this particular show. I don't know if I could do those in the future. We'll see. I'm hoping you guys – this is my last one here. I'm, I'm hoping that you guys um, like the new format. I appreciate so much so many of you um, who have come over for the live show on YouTube. I, I know it's a little different. Um, but I, I think it's superior to the to the previous format. Uh, I'm trying not to say their name, so so I get more traction on this um, particular format. It's just better, uh, you know. And the stuff is is you know the right direction. I know my mother was saying, "Isn't it nice that you can read the stinking label?" Like I, I just like that, you know. Uh, I think the HD obviously is really good. The fact that you can see the whole bar, I think, is pretty awesome. Um, so oh, I forgot some of my lighting. Hang on, let's see. There we go. I can put my – see, I have the top lights as well. We have up lights for the glassware up top. This is this has been so much fun. I can need to stop looking at my face. i got to look at you guys on the camera. I'm training myself to do that a little bit better. So, uh, all right. So, again, this is the – what is this called? The Turf Club. So, this is actually – this 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 gets us going for next week, okay? So, next week's show is going to be all about the martini. So, this is where the martini got started. This is actually – the first martini cocktail. And you're going to freak out because you're like, dude, it's brown. What the hell is going on right now? What is happening? I swear. This was this was the first incarnation where someone said, all right, we can use bourbon and stuff like that. But what about gin? What about gin? So we are going to rip off. Hello, sweetie. We're going to make a lemon twist. This is our last one. Looks like our... <clears throat> My lovely niece and my beautiful wife have come back from the pool. We're going to make a little twisty poo. <clears throat> We're going to express this 
over the cocktail. I want to wipe it around the sides, get those oils going on. And I'm going to just drape it on top. Um, I like, I think this gets you um, more of the, the nose of the lemon peel. I'll try to start to do that a little bit more. All right, what do I smell? It's very light. I get the lemon, obviously. All right, let's take a sip. What is this? This is the uh, this is Martini cocktail formula. Shit, number one. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put it in there as I dropped it, you guys. All right, here we go. Mm. Shut the front door. Hold on, let me. Wow. Okay, let me break this down. Whoa. This is not at all what I expected. So first of all, I did some research, and there's some other old Tom Gin that was like twice as much. I think this was in the $30 range, but I was like, you know, I'm trying not to spend $60 on a bottle that like – so we bought this char chartreuse. I have some chartreuse back there. It was $65, and I bought it a year and a half ago, and it's good that we barely used it. Um, but I'm trying not to buy bottles that never are used. Um, that is that is a – it's a unique flavor. Um, mm, 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 mm. Mm. Mm, mm. Wow. Okay. It's more floral. It's, and you guys will have to taste it and, and back me up on this. It's, it's more like, I, I don't want to scare you, but it has a perfume esque um, profile. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to give you guys better tasting notes, but I'm just like I'm just I'm surprised by and I, maybe you guys could help me with some tasting notes. Mm. Okay, um, it's it's rich, it's different, and it's a sipper. So get in there. All right. So yeah, I know I I know I'm scared. I don't have any desire to drink perfume. It better not taste like shit. I know it's uh it's it's a different. Let's, let's let's see if we can get any tasting notes in there. I don't know. Anything? Okay, so I've I've got some. He too is stumped, and my brother has a really good palate. And so when we go on wine tasting, we will sit there and break stuff down. And so yeah, he's he's stumped. Oh. Yeah. It evolves. It's an interesting. So, okay. And then we have one. This is shitty. Okay. That's fine. Actually, yeah. like Hand it back. No, you like it. But I don't know what it's yeah. No, no. Yeah. No, it's definitely a, you can kind of see how, yeah, it was kind of a, a sipper, you know, lady, sure, you know, very British, you know, very, it's, it's a sipper. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily make that for myself. Um, but who knows? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, and we've had all the others. So, if we had done the reverse and maybe started with that and then did all the others, who knows? You know, it's kind of like a, it's the difference between like, you know, a Chablis and a Cabernet, you know, like, so you got to kind of watch that. So next week on Rob the Rich, we are going to do um, some cocktails that are on the lighter side of vermouths, right? So we're going to, I'm going to show you guys the Martinez, which is actually the ancestor of the Martini. We're going to do a fourth degree martini. We're going to do a dry martini. We're going to do a Gibson and we're going to do a Metropole. So these are all historic cocktails. Hope you can join me again next week at 530 right on my YouTube channel. Please consider, you know, subscribing to my channel. Please hit like uh, those likes. You know, I'm trying to get this thing out there and, and get it going and, and take it to the next level. So thank you all for joining me either on the live or if you're watching this later. Uh, peace, love and happiness. See you next time.